Most people know something about the story of Jonah and the whale. Well, actually, it's not called a whale in Scripture. It's a big fish. But it, most people know that story, right? But the important question to ask, I think, is how can we find grace in that epic fish tale? Jonah earned his nickname, the Reluctant Prophet, because when God called him to go to preach to the city of Nineveh, he really didn't want to go. Nineveh was a very large city, three days walk across, the text says, and, and God was asking Jonah to travel throughout the city, calling on the Ninevites to repent, to turn around, to change direction. And the reason Jonah didn't want to take on that role is really pretty simple. The Ninevites were horrible people, the worst of the worst. Their cruelty was legendary. In fact, they had the reputation of being almost inhuman because of the terrible things they did. It, it was said that they skinned people alive, even. So it's really easy to understand why Jonah didn't want to have anything to do with the Ninevites. For Jonah, there was also another issue. In, in his mind, and in the minds of just about everyone else, the Ninevites were undeserving of God's favor. More to the point, Jonah would have said they were deserving of God's wrath. Clearly, these were people who needed smiting. <laughs> so Jonah just flat refused to go. In fact, he got on a boat that was headed in the opposite direction, away from the Lord, as the text says. Then, when a massive storm arose and it became clear to everyone on board that it was Jonah's fault, he did, after all, refuse God's direct command, they threw him overboard. And as the story goes, Jonah was then swallowed by a big fish and he stayed in the belly of this giant fish for three days. Now, now imagine the smell. <laughs> and then, as if that weren't enough uh, of a clue for Jonah what he ought to do, the fish vomited him up on the shore. And so Jonah decided it was probably time to go to Nineveh. And as he entered the city and he cried out, 40 days more and Nineveh will be overthrown. Jonah must have relished the thought of God's wrath visited upon that city. The idea of Nineveh being overthrown and destroyed was delightful to Jonah. It was exactly what they deserved. And then the Ninevites did the very thing Jonah was afraid they would do. They repented. They turned around. They changed direction. So what was that reluctant prophet to do now? Well, Jonah knew very well what would come next. When God saw that the city had ceased their evil behavior, God would be gracious to them. They'd be forgiven and offered the very grace that they did not deserve. And that's exactly what happened. And Jonah was furious. Jonah said, Come on, Lord. Wasn't this precisely my point when I was back in my own land? This is why I fled to Tarshish earlier. I knew that you are a merciful God and compassionate God and very patient and full of faithful love and willing not to destroy. Jonah was, to put it mildly, disturbed by God's grace. Even getting a little snarky and overly dramatic, he said, At this point, Lord, you may as well take my life from me because it would be better for me to die than to live. And then Jonah went out and sat down east of the city and he sulked. And he watched and he waited to see what would happen to the city. Can't you just picture Jonah sitting there at a safe distance watching and waiting and hoping that God would still smite that wicked city? Imagine him. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and then nothing silence. Here's what happened next, and I'm going to read from the text. Then the Lord God provided a shrub, and it grew up over Jonah, providing shade for his head and saving him from his misery. Jonah was very happy about the shrub, but God provided a worm the next day at dawn, and it attacked the shrub so that it died. Then as the sun rose, God provided a dry east wind, and the sun beat down on Jonah's head so that he became faint. He begged that he might die, saying, It's better for me to die 
than to live. Jonah said, God said to Jonah, Is your anger about the shrub a good thing? Jonah said, Yes, my anger is good, even to the point of death. But the Lord said, Well, you pitied the shrub for which you didn't work and which you didn't raise. It grew in a night and perished in a night. Yet for my part, can't I pity Nineveh, that great city in which there are more than 120,000 people who can't tell their right hand from their left and also many animals? The story ends with a repentant Nineveh and an unrepentant Jonah. Jonah completely missed the point. But the writer of this text doesn't want us to miss the point. The grace of God extends far beyond where we would draw the line. That's also what made Jesus so offensive to the citizens of Nazareth when he preached that first sermon of his in the synagogue there. They wanted to throw him off a hill because of his extension of grace beyond their comfort level. It's this stretching of God's grace beyond our comfort level. Grace we don't like and even grace that makes us cringe that most clearly defines God's grace. Every time we try to place a limit on God's grace, it always stretches further. So the challenging questions of this story we all must ask ourselves are questions like these. Are there people I think are not deserving of God's grace? What would God say about that? Have I ever been angry at God for extending what I think is undeserved grace? Is God's grace sometimes not fair? When in my life have I seen God's grace extended beyond where I might place it? I look forward to digging a little deeper into this unusual idea of grace as we continue our Lenten series, Listen for Grace, this Sunday with the reluctant prophet, Grace is disturbing.